I want to welcome all of our members and the distinguished panel of Navy and Marine Corps leaders for today's hearing. We're on a little bit of a time crunch because they will be calling votes and and just actually did see, um, instead of being prophetic, I guess I'm an historian, they just called the uh, vote. So uh, Mr. Courtney and I both are simply going to submit our opening statements for the record. I think Joe's agreed with that. Uh, so with that, Mr. Stackley, if you could provide us your opening remarks, it's my understanding that you're the only one to provide opening remarks, and then we will recess, take the votes, and come back and begin with um, our, our questions. So, uh, Mr. Stackley, we're glad to have you here today. As all of you know, uh, Sean Stackley is the Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Research, Development, and Acquisition. Thank you for being here with us today, and we look forward to your remarks. Thank you, Chairman Forbes, Ranking Member Courtney, distinguished members of the subcommittee, thank you for the opportunity to appear before you today to address Department of the Navy acquisition programs. Joining me today are Deputy Chief of Naval Operations for Capabilities and Resources, Vice Admiral Joe Malloy, and Deputy Commandant for Combat Development and Integration, Lieutenant General Bob Walsh. So with the permission of the subcommittee, I propose to provide brief opening remarks and submit a formal statement for the record. Without objection, your full uh, remarks will be submitted as part of the record. Thank you, sir. On behalf of our Navy and Marine Corps, I'd like to start by thanking this com committee for your strong support in the 2016 Defense Authorization and Appropriations Bills. Not only has Congress fully supported our request, the committee increased funding for our most critical programs, sending a strong signal regarding the priority you place on the role of our Navy and Marine Corps. We're committed to making good on that investment, to uphold our end of our shared responsibility to protect the nation, to take care of our men and women in uniform, and to do so in the most cost-conscious manner possible and protect the taxpayer. And we've been faithful to our fiscal responsibilities, leveraging every tool available to drive down cost. We've tightened requirements, maximized competition, increased the use of fixed-price contracts, and capitalized on multi-year procurements. And we've attacked our cost of doing business so that mo more of our resources can be dedicated to making warfighting capability. However, fiscal challenges remain. Across the past four fiscal years, the Department of the Navy's budget has been reduced by $30 billion compared to the funding that we determined was necessary to fully meet the defense strategic guidance. This fiscal environment continues to drive tough choices and requires new thinking in order to improve the balance between capability, capacity, readiness, and the vital industrial base. Because, independent of this fiscal environment, the demand for naval presence remains high. Today, greater than half of our fleet is at sea, and near 80,000 sailors and Marines are deployed. So from the Sea of Japan to the Eastern Mediterranean, they are our first defense against the threat of ballistic missiles. And from the Straits of Hormuz to the Straits of Malacca, they are the providers of maritime security. And below the surface of the sea, they are our nation's surest deterrent against the use of strategic weapons. They're engaged in expeditionary maneuver from the Western Pacific to West Africa, ready to move ashore should conditions on the ground call for it, or provide humanitarian assistance wherever the disaster may occur. Therefore, we've placed a priority on forward presence, near-term readiness, investment in those future capabilities critical to our long-term technical superiority and stability in our shipbuilding program. We are well on the way to a 300-ship Navy in 2019 and to meeting our overall requirement for a 308-ship Navy by 2021. In 2015, we delivered six ships to the Navy, but more impressively, we launched an additional nine and laid keels for 11 more ships. We're preparing CVN-78, the Gerald Ford, our first new design aircraft carrier in 40 years for sea trials in June, and continued construction on our sister ship, CVN-79, the John F. Kennedy. And in doing so, we've been successful to drive cost control and improve cost on these capital ships, and we'll continue to do so. 